Hello, it's Jay here again and welcome to another tutorial. So, in this video, we're going to make a start on the opponent tagger I. And a lot of the basic code is going to be similar or, in fact, pretty much identical to the player movement. But we still need to get in place, so let's begin right up here at the very top. We'll open and close brackets. Require component, open and close brackets again, type of, open and close brackets, audio source, add audio source when attaching the script. And now we'll begin with the variable. So the first one, private transform underscore opponent transform. Close the line off into the comments. Private character controller underscore opponent controller. Close that off into the comments defines opponent character controller naming a convention. You could put naming convention actually into the transform if you want, because that's exactly what it is. It's the naming convention for the opponent's transform. Line break of type private animation. Underscore, and we'll give this a naming convention of opponent anim. And we'll say defines naming convention for opponents animation component public animation clip underscore opponent idle anim close the line off creates slot in inspector to assign opponent idle animation and that's all we're going to use for now just the idle and the way the opponent AI, the way we're going to do it is we're going to build it up in sort of layers. So we're just going to get the idle in place to begin with. And then we'll get obviously a state in place where we decide do we want to be aggressive, counter attacking, wait on the player. But let's... And then, obviously, the next layer will then follow on from that, sorry. So that's how we're going to build up the opponent AI. And um, I hope doing it this way will make it easy to understand. And we'll create another variable of private vector 3 underscore opponent move direction sorry that should be equal to a vector 3.0 close the line off into the comments defines opponents move direction and set to zero Um, yeah, these can be of type 5 at this time. 
private float underscore opponent gravity equal to 5f into the comments opponent gravity strength private float and we want opponent gravity modifier we'll make that equal to 5f close the line off into the comments defines gravity modifier value All right, we want opponent vertical speed 0, 0.0 F into the comments opponent vertical velocity private and we want collision flags underscore collision if I will say collision flags and we'll add opponent this time into the comments last con collision flag returned from Controller dot move private opponent. In fact, we'll call this opponent a I state underscore opponent AI state. Let's close that line off into the comments. Defines naming convention for opponent AI state. We'll get rid of that error now by creating a private enum opponent AI state. We'll open and close brackets. We'll come inside and we'll just create the opponent idle for now. So let's have a look. Fix that little typo. That's corrected the errors. And let's come into the void start so opponent controller sorry i want to get that done first get component open and close brackets character controller come to the end of the line open and close brackets close that line off into the comments caches opponent character controller we'll get the animation component next get component open and close brackets animation come to the end of the line close the line off or open and close brackets and close line off so we'll say opponent anim equals the animation component and we'll just continue on so let's have a look we need the opponent transform 
is just going to be equal to transform. That's all we need in this case. Cash opponents transform. Opponent move direction equals vector three dot zero. Close that line off. Set move direction to zero on start up. And I know we've got in here, but I also like to get into the void start as well. Shouldn't be necessary, but I just like to do it just to help avoid any errors. If I was going to remove some code, I could just remove it from the variable. And I would soon do that than remove it from the void start. There's less chance of any errors or glitches removing it here than from here. So let's come down and fact no that's all we need to do for the void start for now. Um Yeah, that's all we'll get done for this lesson I think. So Sorry start core routine. This is because I had the um, core routine on my mind. I was going to put it into void start for the moment, but I think we'll create the actual switch block in the next video now, because this is getting quite long, this video. So let's come void, apply opponent gravity. Now, we'll open and close brackets, we'll open and close again. Using a different naming convention than the one we used in the player script should not be necessary, but it's something that I just personally like to do. So, if you want to keep the naming conventions for functions like the gravity the same, by all means do so. Personally, this is just how I prefer to do things. So, I'm going to get a call the apply opponent gravity function in the void update. And we'll also create a public bool. Opponent is grounded, just as we did for the player. Open and close brackets inside the brackets. Return. Open and close brackets inside the brackets. And we want the confusion flags opponent. And collision flags dot collided below. We'll come to the end of the line. We'll say does not with an exclamation part mark equal zero close the line off into the comments return collision flags and you've probably noticed i'm going through this very quickly because i want to get all this code which is pretty much the same as the player movement in fact, I think I've even used the same comments, or at least I've tried to. Um, I can kind of remember because I've created these variables so many times in so diff many different projects, obviously projects away from YouTube. I tend to use the same comments. But we'll say if open and close brackets, inside the brackets, opponent is grounded, open and close brackets again, into the comments, if 
I'll put a little speech marks. Opponent is grounded. We want the opponent vertical speed to be equal to its default value of 0, 0.0 f into the comments. We'll say then make opponent's vertical speed equal to zero else and we'll open and close brackets come inside those brackets underscore opponent vertical speed so if the opponent is not grounded we'll minus equal by the opponent's gravity because we need a negative value to make the actual character go downwards on the screen and yeah I'll put the comment in now we'll say minus gravity from vertical speed come to the line below we'll say times the opponent's gravity modifier times time dot delta time we'll close the line off into the comments and times by modifier so let's just tidy that up and we'll save this off. So as I said, I've gone over this quickly because we've already done it before with the player, but we do need to get in place. I've tried to get a lot done in this lesson so we can move forward and I hope you enjoyed this video. So until next time. Bye for now.